Her eye was drawn to an entry dated October 3rd. Has been responding well to SOCOM, moods more stable, mother reports he is more obedient. She turned the pages, looked at the last entry. Patient claims that he can become a bird and has flown over his school. Last SOCOM injection 10 days ago. Drug side effects are worrisome. Cassie looked at the date. October 29th, three days before Darren died. She remembered because Darren had killed himself the day after Halloween. She wasn't sure what the entry meant. If SOCOM was so good, why had Rick been worried about Darren being on it? On a hunch, she looked more closely at the names in the filing cabinets. Two more of them sounded familiar. Ben Tranbarger had gone to Cassie's high school too, but had been a senior. Carmen Hernandez had dropped out in ninth grade. Ben had drunk silver cleaner. Carmen stabbed herself in the abdomen. The newspaper interviewed experts who cautioned that media attention could prompt copycat suicides. One story said that after Ben killed himself, his mom found a clipping about Darren's death on top of his dresser. Maybe it was copycatting, or maybe it was only a coincidence. Crazy people went to therapy. At least, that was how it was supposed to work. Even so, doctors couldn't fix everything. But when Cassie opened the two files, she saw that both Ben and Carmen had been on SOCOM. And, just like in Darren's file, Rick had notes about how they were starting to become delusional, and that he was taking them off SOCOM. Cassie needed to show these files to someone, but if she took them and he found out, well, she didn't even want to think about how angry her stepfather would be. If only Rick had a photocopier. Then Cassie thought of her digital camera, the one Rick had bought her to try to soften the move. She had already had a camera, a Minolta her father had given her for her 14th birthday. The new camera had intrigued her, even if it seemed too easy. No film to buy, no f-stops to fiddle with. Just point and shoot, Rick had told her. She looked at her watch. 8.44. How long did she have until they came back from Baskin Robbins? She ran upstairs and snatched up the camera from her desk. As she steadily turned the pages and pressed the camera's button, Cassie tried to reason with herself. Minor was a small town. Rick had been one of just two therapists who specialized in adolescents. It probably was just a coincidence that he had been the one who had treated these three teenagers. She jumped when she heard the garage door whine. Cassie wasn't done, but she hurriedly closed the files, slid them back in the right places, turned off the light, and slipped out of the office. By the time her mom and Rick came in, Cassie was coming down the stairs, as if she had been in her room all along. But at three o'clock in the morning, panic jolted her awake. Had she remembered to turn off Rick's computer?